Our media fraternity, I am Professor Shahid Rasool, uh, Dean Academy Affairs, Central University of Kashmir. So, uh, I've invited you uh, for a press conference, as all of you are aware, that National Education Policy 2020 have been uh, uh, implemented, and it is the third year. And there are celebrations happening about the completion of the third year of the uh, National Education Policy 2020. And here with us, uh, our Vice Chancellor, uh, Professor A. Ravindranath, which all of you know has joined uh, some three, four months back in the month of April. And since then, uh, he has not only, you know, uh, uh, kept uh, us busy overnight, he has kept the whole university, including students and scholars, involved uh, in seeing that, you know, the university develops in a proper manner and the national education policy is implemented in letter and spirit so that our students can also compete at the national and international level. We want we want to take off with the other aspects of the NAP 2020 in letter and spirit what uh, my colleagues has been mentioned. So okay, just uh, uh, we have provided target 100, some of them it is being covered on that, under that particular brochure also. But today we have assembled here only the third year of education policy has been introduced in 1968. It took almost 10 years to implement it. Subsequently, even 1986 also, after program of action in 1992, then that is uh, implemented. Now we have been, uh, after three decades of uh, that's launching, then it has been initiated. And this is mainly keeping in view of the, the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. The goal four uh, mainly mentioned about the uh, quality education. So where, how inclusive and equitable quality education can be offered with the lifelong learning opportunities. So keeping in that mind, this has been developed only and the learner-centric uh, education system they wanted to offer. Here, the mainly uh, the programs which university is to conceive based on the holistic education approach. And secondly, the curricula and courses must emphasize on the outcome-based education system, mainly with the knowledge, skills, and competency how the student is acquiring. So next, finally, thirdly, it is mainly goes with the uh, uh, pedagogy model, which we need to adopt based on the learner interest and learner abilities, just we have to work out. So here, normally, we are thinking about a four-pronged strategy, that is teaching, learning, training, and engagement. So in this four-pronged strategy, just we wanted to see that uh, First teaching is the prescribed curricula. If any student is interested to learn beyond the curricula, it will be called learning aspects. So that thirdly, if any student is interested in acquiring certain skills, we wanted to give the special training in that aspect. And fourthly, we wanted to see the student uh, will have the opportunity to pursue any research, they can go ahead. So just uh, I would like to mainly, I would like to mention because we are handling the students of digital divide generation and also who want to explore. So based on that, this uh, the, the curriculum design and uh, opportunity of curriculum delivery is to be modified in accordance. So universities are need to gear up for that particular situation. So we know the when it is learner centric, but learner can be uh, looked into three kinds of people normally entering into the university system. One is first generation learner will be there and the second one is second generation, the third is third generation. So these people will have a different abilities and interest for the learning aspects. Accordingly, university need to design the curriculum and courses. So that we are focusing on. The another aspect just we have to see in this also this learners has a different abilities. So based on the abilities, we can call it a gifted learner and average learner and passive learner. So gifted learner is normally a self-motivated guy. So we have to provide certainly certain uh, support and facilities for him. So to study beyond the curriculum, which is required. The passive learner normal, average learner normally requires a motivation. So for that, we the teachers are designing specifically how they, they can motivate and make him to be a, a good uh, outcome based learner to get into either in the employment or into higher education system. The passive learner mainly needs 
and attention where the remedial classes will be arranged for the students and they make them to bring into the mainstream. So this way just to the learner focusing curriculum and uh, delivery both we are focusing on. Further, the, we want to give the knowledge of the past that is what they were and knowledge which has said what at present and knowledge which uh, uh, ought to be mainly we, how they can predict the future. So these things just we would like to focus on. So based on that, the student can choose their careers, how it should be there. And we already mentioned certain aspects, uh, these things, uh, just I would like to, in this particular brief note, we mentioned. So uh, these particularly, the, these copies have been provided to you. So first, uh, the holistic multidisciplinary approach is adopted through various domains of general, professional, technical, and vocational education. Probably, you might be knowing the terminology, but what is the main objective of this particular general education? You know very well, general education is mainly meant for life and values, training the people, especially BA, BCom, BSc comes under general education. And professional education normally we consider as a legal education, management education, teacher education, and media studies uh, like that, it will be part of that. And technical education is mainly that Professional education is especially for training the people for certain expertise, standard, and ethics is important. And technical education is, you know, BE, BTEC are the programs, which is mainly meant for the students to innovation and invention purposes. And th fourthly, the vocational education mainly training the students for a specific work. So these four types of education being offered at Central University of Kashmir. So this how we are going to integrate in the multidisciplinary approach based on the requirements. Now the NEP has given the CCF UP of uh, which UGC has recently launched in the month of November. So that we are adopting and aligning the existing batch to the this new model and thereby they will have an opportunity to go this because this is mainly consists of six uh, types of classification is there being given for the courses. One is major courses, the second one is the minor courses, third is multidisciplinary and fourth is ability enhancement and fifth is the skill enhancement and sixth is the value added courses. So these four courses mainly multidisciplinary, skill education, ability enhancement and value added courses, student have an option to choose from the open education resources, especially this FIM and MOOCs so that whereas major and minor will be offered in the institution itself. So that flexibility has been given by the UGC up to 40% we can move. At the moment we are having only 20% is there. We are our next uh, statutory body academic council and board of studies will enable the student to, to go up to 40%. So these are the things just we are planning to do and four year integrated uh, teacher education program also we are approved by the NCTE and which we are launching from the next academic year onwards and the registration in academic bank of credits and uh, National Academic Depository is already completed and some students are already being started enrolling. And so there are six diploma courses are offered under Design and Innovation Center is there. So, yeah. so these are the things just at the moment existing is there. Now what we intend to do also just be made. So as per the NEP, there is a affordability and access, access and accountability is one of the important aspects are there. So these three affordability we wanted to see the student can uh, choose the uh, credit based fee structure. So whatever the credits he takes from the university for that only the, on the credit based fee structure he can pay. Because some of the courses he may be opting for the open education resources, he need not require to opt for it. The second is we want to intend to initiate the variable tuition fee structure for the students. Because there are need based students are there, merit and need based are there and only merit based. So that also just we wanted to work out for the uh, affordability uh, norms and further the enabling the learners to be partners of knowledge creation. So that we wanted to see the all the learners are to part of knowledge creation because we have the good media school is there. So we wanted to develop most of the uh, ca curriculum content into uh, e-content mode. And subsequently, we wanted to deliver through various uh, educational uh, YouTube channels created by the students themselves, by the faculty themselves, or scholars themselves. So this is one of the aspects just 
and enhancing the equitable access. So we are launching the School of Honors and Finishing Studies or Skill Studies program. So this will enable for the dual degree mode. A student who is interested to do in the uh, Honors program, they can enroll even not only the Central University of Kashmir, even the students who are studying outside the Central University of Kashmir, mainly the colleges or University of Kashmir and other institutions also, they can enroll for this particular program. This we wanted to offer in the immersion model. So this is which we envisaged and probably you may understand the for subsequently when the policy is being made for this particular one. So this is mainly address the uh, student career path based on the employability needs and also innovation culture and enterprising abilities. So another one is we wanted to creation of instructional media center to develop digital and online courses with the standard protocol of learning process and dissemination of knowledge. So through social and media educational channels to expand lifelong learning opportunities. And further, we wanted to have the facilitating design your own courses. Probably recently you might have been known about University of Jammu. They wanted to start design their own programs, degrees. But we wanted to have design your own courses under exit model. So that will be the thing just we just we wanted to go ahead. So in the exit provision, there is four credits of theory will be there, six credits of experiential learning will be there. The students then, because they are the most informed uh, students, so they can design the what are the market uh, driven options are there and uh, opportunities are there. Based on that, they can design the courses. In that, we will provide the experts to deliver at least uh, uh, 12 out of uh, uh, 30 hours uh, as uh, expert lectures. And remaining 18 hours, students under self access and interactive learning, so they will complete it. So thereby two credits each like that, they complete it, four credits. Then six credits, they, we, we provide the experiential learning by attaching to any of the industry or service sector or the research organization to get that particular practical exposure and to subsequently those 10 credits help them to exit the program and they can get an employment opportunity. So this is one thing just we are thinking about under enhancing equitable access. So next to signing uh, translatable MOUs. So, so far MOUs has been signed, we are not able to translate into the action. So that we wanted to do with an institution of national importance and other research organizations and premier institutions. And not only that, even industries, manufacturing and service sector and NGOs, etc. We wanted to have it so that the students can have an opportunity to do have the experiential learning and also sharing of uh, expertise and resources with them. It is one of the opportunity just we are looking at. Even the internship trainings also just we wanted to do under this particular MOUs. So further we wanted to create unique facilities under student support and progression through skill development center and knowledge resource center and student activity center. So one of the brochure which we have given in that details are there about these three. So you can know. And ensuring quality and accountability is one of the important aspects of this NEP 2020. So the, for this, we wanted to strengthen the IT-enabled service, both in academics and administration, through establishment of Center for Information Technology. So it will utilize the services of National Educational Technology Forum for effective use of technology to enhance effectiveness and academics and administration in the university. So this is what just we wanted to look into that. Next, facilitating e-governance and automation of administration and academics is the priority area for ensuring transparency and accountability and formulation of appropriate policies for ease of dispense of issues related to academic and administrative matters with specific focus on capacity building of faculty and staff. This is one of the important uh, aspects just we are looking at and creation of state of art infrastructure for administration, academics and amenities with a net zero campus norms and ensure proper fiscal management and disciplines. So these are the things just to be under quality and accountability yes we are. Now another important aspect in the promotion of Indian languages is there and culture in addition to Indian knowledge system. So for this we wanted to establish a center for Kashmiri language and culture studies. So that will take care of part of this particular whatever the objective is being or mandate is given under new education policy 2020. So further the specific focus on holistic development is there. So we want to formulate strategic pedagogy model emphasis on teaching, learning, training and engagement based on learner interest and ability with a focus on linguistic and computer skill, especially communication and computer skills. We, want, we wanted to look into that. Next provision of non-CGPA credits for the 
co-curricular and extracurricular activities. So this is another model just we wanted to work it out. And now the creating research ecosystem, ensuring research quality and promoting research culture to foster innovation and startup enterprise. So this is mainly the concluding uh, uh, things of this, the strategy which we modeled. And you are knowing that the implementation of NEB20 requires a concerted efforts from the central state governments and uh, educational institutions, teachers, parents, and other stakeholders. So we have the three kinds of stakeholders are there for primary stakeholders and secondary stakeholders and tertiary stakeholders. So primary stakeholders mainly includes the faculty and staff and students and the governing bodies and other statutory bodies of the institution. The secondary stakeholders, mainly the parents, alumni, and the government will be there. And th tertiary stakeholders, mainly the employers and other uh, societies, and like you, people also part of that tertiary stakeholders. So it is given an understanding that NEB20 is conceived in tune with the global agenda of United Nations Sustainable Development Goals 2030, as reflected in Su Sustainable Development Goal 4, that seeks to ensure inclusive and equitable quality education and promote lifelong learning opportunities for all. So this requires substantial investment in providing strong and vibrant public education system by facilitating the true philanthropic contribution through active participation of community and private sector under corporate social responsibility. So this we are wanted to have. And finally, transforming India's education system to meet the demands of rapidly evolving global landscape and foster competent and skilled and knowledge citizenry capable of contributing effectively to society and the economy. So this is uh, the main concept behind this uh, NEP 2020 and how we are geared up and prepared for this particular uh, situation which uh, NEP 2020 has uh, mandated for the, all the higher education institutions.